Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to this fireside chat, which I'm sure will be extremely engaging and interesting. Uh, my name is Kamalika Perez. I'm a director with Google Cloud India. And it's my absolute privilege to be here for the second edition of MMA's Data Unplugged. Now, data, of course, is the word that's brought all of us here today. Uh, it's a, it's a, the, the buzzword, the catchphrases that we all use. Uh, you know, data is the new oil, which always gets a groan and an eye roll. Uh, but also interesting ones like, uh, you know, in God we trust, the rest have to bring data. Uh, the latest one I heard was that wherever there's data smoke, there's fire, which to me uh, indicated that whenever there's innovation happening on the data front, whenever there's, there are data initiatives that's being undertaken by an organization, usually shows or is usually symptomatic of strategizing, innovating, and just looking for new ways to do things with the consumer. So to talk about that today, I have a very special guest, Gaurav Anand, Chief Digital and Marketing Officer of L'Oreal India, in charge of consumer insights, consumer advisory, data, media, and strategy. Welcome, Gaurav, to today's session. Thank you, Komalika. Uh, so, Gaurav, just to tee things off for today, uh, you know, of course, L'Oreal India and L'Oreal overall, uh, you know, ex extremely storied organization, a hundred year legacy, but really also in the thick of all the transformations happening digitally, right? I mean, uh, you know, the whole, the, the change in the world of beauty tech, and interestingly, the word beauty tech apparently was coined by L'Oreal. Uh, and, the, and, and all the changes in the ecosystem that's happening, how are you charting your journey with consumer data through all of this change and innovation? It's a very, very interesting question, Komilika. Um, if there is one thing I want you guys to take out from our chat today, is the best way to find your future consumers is to look at your current consumers. And I'll, I'll elaborate on that a bit. Quite often pains me to see still a lot of marketing brief in the section when it says, tell me about your consumer. They said 18 to 44 females in India. If the mission is to acquire consumers beyond the content, the key area where you can differentiate is how to find my consumer. And for L'Oreal, our single biggest mission is to acquire consumers. And this is not a marketing mission. This is on the mission strategy from our CEO. And if we have to do that better and most efficiently, more efficiently than others, then we need to find ways to find our consumer better. And that's where consumer data fits in. Just to give you a few examples, uh, there are three areas in which we are looking at the application of consumer data. One, as I said, we have a lot of transacting consumers in India. Some of the data that we are getting from them, we are leveraging Facebooks and the Googles of the world to find audiences similar to that. And the level of intelligence that these platforms has today is better than the guesswork of any marketer. So if you take your consumer data and find audiences similar to that with the use of intelligence that is existing in Facebook and Google, the robustness of the consumer you get is much higher. And when we are doing our marketing campaigns on this, we are seeing the results. Two to three times higher ad recalls. Even the CPCs are looking much better. So that's one. Second, in my mind, one of the most understated and the forgotten heroes are the people who have shown interest in your brand, but you are not leveraging that data. These could be people who take a sample from Kiehl's or these could be people who have come to your websites or to your D2Cs. How do we take these high intent consumers, find people like them, and use that as an audience? And third, which is the most interesting bit, is the partnership. For example, we are looking for affluent consumers for Lancome. We are doing partnership with some of the aggregators who bring in credit card details credit card data on people who are the high affluent or spending high. We are doing that work with also aggregators who are doing neighborhood targeting, for example. We are also doing that work with uh, aggregators who are doing a lot of sampling effort. So with these three areas, we are leveraging the consumer data to find our audiences better than hopefully our competitors and improve our cost of acquisition. No, 
Oh, thank you so much for sharing that and sharing the whole spectrum of what's being done to actually identify and find the consumer and then have a conversation with her. Uh, let me ask you uh, 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 this, Gaurav, that if you actually look a little far ahead, like let's say three to five years you know, into the future, how do you think this scenario is going to change? Because if I just look, let's say, three years into the past, just in that time, the amount of technology that's being used and the amount of, you know, uh, whether it's personalization, digitization that's being driven has changed drastically. So a little bit of crystal ball gazing, if I may. No, I think... Um we don't have to look too far. Uh, L'Oreal presence in China is very strong. And if you look into that, and not just L'Oreal, in China, the entire category, if you look at, especially in beauty, nearly 40 to 50% of media today is leveraged from data, which is a big drastic shift if we think about the India ecosystem. True. If that is likely going to happen, a lot of partners will need to work together. It would also mean a big shift of ad spends from some of the other channels. Uh, but I do see that is a likelihood scenario. My team, we are also gunning for a particular percentage of our media that should be coming from first party data uh, because we want to be ahead of the curve on this. No, that's a, that's a great point. And if I may uh, probe you a little more, you mentioned the importance of partnerships in your earlier question as well as uh, in this one. Uh, how do you see that panning out? Because I guess, uh, you know, the partnership ecosystem is something that's also changing, you know, as, as we go ahead. No, definitely. If, uh, if somebody is sitting in, in their office rooms are thinking that this transformation they can do by themselves, uh, they're just kidding themselves. Uh, there are a few elements in partnership. And, you know, again, the Googles and the Facebook, when they talk about their marketing, uh, they talk about partnerships. So... In my previous life, I was working for Facebook, now Meta. And then when I had moved there from a company like Procter & Gamble, I was like, wow, what is the power of external partnerships? Because quite often in CPG, we are all talking about media, how do we improve our spawned awareness and stuff. But I've, the tech companies are doing a phenomenal job in marketing by leveraging partnerships, finding the right audiences, making the shake hands, and leveraging it. So if we have to crack consumer data, it's a lot of partnership across uh, channels where you can have an aggregated set of consumers. It could be Facebook, Google, Amazon, Nikes of the world. It is also the aggregators who are going to bridge the data that you know, a manufacturer has with relevant transactional data. So I see I just talked to a few folks as well here. Yeah. And the third element is also our retailers. Uh, one of the examples I would love to share is with one retailer, we reached out to them saying, okay, how can we have a win-win scenario on the use of data? And we realized that both the retailer and us had the same KPI. They wanted more consumers for beauty. We wanted more consumers for beauty. But previously, we were a little greedy on saying, okay, give us a specific cohort which will only benefit us. And now what we have started doing, okay, Let's broaden the spectrum so that we have a, if it is truly partnership, it should help you as well. So with one of the retailers, we worked on the data of people who had downloaded their app, but had not made a purchase. And now with that cohort, we helped them buy a L'Oreal product, which helped both the partners, us clearly, but also to the retailer who, because for them, these were the consumers who were still sitting on the fence. And I think that's the future of the partnership um, on how we can evolve and benefit both partners and us in acquiring consumer, consumers via consumer data. Oh, that's such a fantastic example, Gaurav. You know, the power of partnerships indeed, I think, will play a central role. Uh, you know, it is playing and will continue to play a central role. Uh, let me shift the lens a little bit away from the consumer, right? Now, when you talk about data, uh, yes, of course, you know, consumer data is, of course, very central. It's kind of where everything starts. But there's the rest of the organization, right? And we have data for business planning, operations planning, supply chain, a lot of which kind of anchors your speed of response to the same consumers. What's your view on how that part of it is working, both in general and with your experience in L'Oreal? No, definitely. I think the data is a common thread across all the elements that you see on the PL. So let me take two examples. One from supply chain. 
your ability to accurately predict how much you will sell has a direct correlation to how much you sell, especially in this world where e-commerce is critical. If you have under-predicted, you're not available, those are sales lost. So if you have over-predicted, inventory cost increases, sometimes it also leads to destruction of products. And ability to predict your demand is getting more and more complicated because earlier you had to do it just internally. Now you have to do it with the retailers. So it's a little bit of a joint forecasting. And in that space, the enthusiasm your marketing team has for the new launch or for the new campaign might not be the same as the retailer has for it. Right? Mm. Or your sales team's enthusiasm on this promotion is going to give me X uplift mm. might not be replicated by the retailer, for example. Mm. Mm. Right? So your chances of either over-predicting or under-predicting is very high. Yeah. And the solve here is data. Right. Obviously, you can, add, you can nudge it a little bit based on your human uh, assessment of the situation, but we have always seen that if the data is given a chance to predict the forecast, it usually ends up doing a better job over a long time uh, than just the folks involved. Right? So we are doing a lot more work on how do we use AI ML to do more demand sensing uh, so that we don't lose any sale opportunity or don't over uh, predict our demand. So that's one on supply chain. If I had to share one more which will be relevant to the audience, it would be from the world of e-commerce. Right? So gone are the days where you, know, you optimize once in a month your campaigns, your media, your supply chain, your forecast. But in e-commerce, you're actually doing on a weekly basis and sometimes even on a daily basis. And one of the age-old questions is, the sales team is going to tell you you're spending too much on marketing and too little on promotion. And the marketing team is going to tell you you're spending too much on <laughs> promotions and too little on marketing. And data can solve that as well. So today, at an SKU level, you can get a sense of, with your promotion, what is level of promo intensity? Are you over-promoting, under-promoting? And if you have the right modeling between promotions and media, you can even decide the trade-offs on should I reduce on this particular SKU for this m week our promo spends and pull it back into media. And if I have to put it back into media, where I should do that. So these trade-offs on promo and media on a daily basis is what helps you keep your PNL on e-commerce accretive. And this is going to get more and more important as we talk more sales through e-commerce. So those are the two examples that come to my mind when we talk about, you know, how does data help in your operations and your planning? No, I mean, those are great examples, Gaurav. And I think this is something that gels with our experience also, that for all the investments going into, you know, first party data and getting, you know, the consumer data and the consumer's version of the truth, uh, when you actually, it's when you actually match it with the rest of the organization, look at fulfillment rates, look at decision making in the moment, all of that, all of which also depends on a lot of, you know, siloed legacy systems. Uh, but if you can do that, if you're able to really leverage the power of data across the board, uh, that's when it becomes, you know, a solution that's more than the sum of its parts. So, yeah, absolutely, I would uh, say, you know, plus one, plus 100 to that. So with that, we come to the end of today's fireside chat. I'm sure the audience wishes it could have gone on for longer, but Gaurav, let me thank you for coming here today and sharing your insights for what has been a very, very interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.